Please join me in a moment of prayer. May the words of my mouth and the meditations of our hearts be acceptable in your sight, O Lord, our rock and our blessed Redeemer. Amen. The alarm sounded clearly as it ran through the firehouse on a bright September morning. It echoed loudly through the bunk room, across the apparatus floor, and through the kitchen where he sat while sipping his coffee. Being used to the sound, he didn't spill a single drop while he put down his cup and quickly folded the morning paper. After all, alarms were his business, for he was a proud member of the New York City Fire Department. His response to the alarm's tone showed the true nature of his professionalism. Without the slightest bit of wasted motion, he donned his protective gear and took his place on the hook and ladder jump seat. While he showed no outward emotion, his mind was racing rapidly as it put together all the details of this particular alarm. It was at the World Trade Center again, a place where his company had been many times in the past. But the horrific nature of some of those calls to that particular building kept him from seeing this as merely routine. Within minutes, a repeated upgrade of alarm reinforced the special urgency of this one call. That alarm urgency overpowered all the details coming from his radio. An airplane had struck one of the Twin Towers. Already, fires were visible on the upper floors. But the fire's intensity made no difference. As his company pulled up on the street by his building, there was no thought in his mind about his own safety. After all, there were people up there. There was no possibility he would simply stand by and watch them burn. Jumping off the truck, he followed his lieutenant into the building and up the stairs. He knew exactly where they were going. They drilled through this rescue many, many times before. Maybe their destination made him run even more quickly than usual. See, there was a special urgency in his mind about rescues from daycare centers. So he and his partners raced up the seemingly endless stairs. Finally, they reached their assignment. And reaching into a crib, he grabbed the baby, covered her securely with his fire coat, and returned to the building. It was then the radio echoed the call he'd never thought to hear. It's coming down! The tower's coming down! All hands, get out of the building! All hands, out of the building! For a few moments, it looked like he'd make it. His feet seemed to sprout wings as he leaped downward toward safety. But then the stairs began to shake crazily, and he heard a rumble coming from above him. Without any hesitation, he dropped to the floor of the nearest landing and curled up in a ball around the baby he held so securely. It was weeks before they found him. All that was left of him was his head, was his torso. His head's arms and legs had been crushed out of existence. But when they turned him over, the baby beneath him, he never let go of the child. He'd given his life to protect. The alarm sounded clearly as it rang through the universe on a bright morning at the dawn of time. It echoed loudly across the rivers, through the hills, and upward toward the stars. For a moment, creation itself trembled with the sound's intensity. But while creation trembled, the creator did not. It was one of the more unpleasant aspects from the creation of those beings called human, whom the creator loved so very much. And even the fall of humans into darkness couldn't shake that steadfast love. As in all things, the necessary response to the alarm was known at the beginning of time. To humans, it seemed long indeed before it occurred, but to the Creator, it seemed like a high lake, until a cry was heard from a stable in Bethlehem. Once again, creation shook with the sound, but those attending the birth of the child 
simply cuddled the crying one until peace was restored. Peace, however, didn't seem to last long around the child. There was something special about the child, something stirring things up whenever the child was around. Wise persons and angels attended the child's birth. Humans of great knowledge marveled at the wisdom shown by the child who was now a youth during debates in the temple. Then the most incredible mixture of persons ever assembled began to follow the now fully grown child across the hills of Galilee and through the streets of Jerusalem. There was, of course, no doubt about the ending of those lengthy travels. As the Creator had seen at time start, the Creator's child twisted in agony on a hill called Golgotha. But even while the child's arms lay pinned by spikes, the child reached out to the humans who fastened him there. They reached out in forgiveness to the ones who driven the nails. They reached out in hope to the ones who twisted nearby. They reached out in life to all humans everywhere. And as they reached out, the child breathed the last breath. All creation screamed in pain. And the darkness which had encircled humans seemed to cover the earth. For three days, the darkness reigned. And then came the light. Then came the loving hug of living arms holding all humanity close. And nothing could loosen the child's hold on the human beings the child had died to protect. The alarm will sound clearly as it rings through the skies on a bright morning at the end of time. It will echo loudly through the heavens, down across the earth, and into the graves in which we lie. No trace of darkness will remain on that day. For in a blazing light will flash from the east as a child returns to bring the reign of the Creator's kingdom of everlasting light. No trace of sadness will remain on that day, and all the Creator's people will dance. We will laugh with joy with those we love, and all the saints in light as we behold the New York City firefighter pass a giggling child to a pair of proud parents. We will cry out with delight as we behold the child, embrace the one once known as thief. And hymns of gladness will fill the air. For all human voices join the angels to give thanks to the one whose loving arms never let us go. All praise to the one who rescues us from darkness. All praise to the one who transforms us into God's kingdom. All praise to the one who brought our peace with the blood of the cross. To God alone be glory.